Thank you very much, Fru. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to have this uh, session on uh, how we're going to all together try to assess the progress we are, we are making. So I'd like just to begin with um, a few remarks. And I think we can put the first slide on. Oh, yes, I'll do it. It's fine. <laughs> Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. Okay, so as you all know, um, the annual meeting is uh, the occasion to share the most recent updates uh, on achievements, works in progresses, but also to identify challenges, uh, both from countries and partners. Um, I think that's what we have done over the past uh, hours and since yesterday. Um, so Philippe shared a, a, a general update on the key progresses from the Secretariat. We also heard from the country support platform. We heard from uh, Dr. Langa on uh, the work that has been initiated at Mozambique level to, to develop an NCP. And we will, of course, we've, we've had all of the updates from the working groups. Uh, uh, and we will also have uh, two other countries who are going to share their key uh, achievements for now, um, their key achievements for for, for the from the, the over the, the 12 past months so it's going to be Kenya and uh, and Ethiopia so my point here is not to go through all what just said these past hours however just just to acknowledge that these are all essential elements to assess progress um, and I think for this 2021 edition what we want to also add, is to take some time, to take some step backs and discuss uh, uh, the, the topic of how we're going to monitor uh, and evaluate uh, all of the, of, the, of the progresses that have been made. So there, is, there are all of these general updates that have been given, but now we would like to take some time to go back to the monitoring framework that we all worked on when the global roadmap was launched. So the topic of monitoring and evaluation is not a new one. Um, and I think the objective of the session is not to rediscuss what we agreed on in the past, um, but just to say that if you look at the, at the timeline, um, we have entered the fourth year of implementation of the global roadmap, which means that one third of uh, the time has passed. And uh, I guess it is now time to go a bit uh, deeper into how we're going to assess the progresses we are all uh, making uh, together at the, at the global partnership. So I guess the three key objectives of our session today are the following. So first, the, the idea is to recap the monitoring and evaluation provisions as described in the global roadmap. Secondly, to assess the global roadmap implementation to date. And thirdly, to be a bit more concrete and recommend next steps to operationalize the monitoring framework. So maybe let's begin uh, quickly with, um, yes, a short recap of the key elements of the, of the global roadmap. So as you know, it has been launched and endorsed by countries and partners in 2017. And the overall objective of this global roadmap is a 90% reduction in cholera-related mortality by 2030. Once we have said that, um, we have two key questions. The question of implementation, and I think we've covered a part of this through the different presentations that were done, and we will also go through this with the coming presentations a bit later today and tomorrow during the breakout groups, and the question of how we assess progress. Um, we, if you have read at the Global Red Map, which I'm sure you have, and if you have looked at the annexes, we have an annex dedicated to the monitoring framework. So I'd like to quickly go through it. I'm not going to go into details because you, will, you have a lot of time, I think, to just go through the details. However, I'd like just to recap quickly the key elements uh, as these are topics that were not covered these past, uh, these past years. So our, well, the monitoring framework is built around seven key categories and the first key cross-cutting axis is the impact, the question of the impact of our global roadmap. So as just said, the main and overall objective is the reduction of 19 persons 
in cholera deaths by 2030, which would also be uh, uh, illustrated by the elimination of cholera in 20 countries, no more uncontrolled outbreaks. And of course, all of, the, all of this intrinsically being intrinsically linked to the achievements of the SDGs. If we go into a, more details, we can move to the goal. So as you know, the roadmap is built on three key axes. The monitoring framework is also built on these key three axes. The first one is the fact that countries detect outbreak early and respond immediately to contain them. The second one is the fact that countries prevent disease occurrence by targeting multisectoral interventions in cholera hotspots. And the third one is about technical support, resource mobilization, and partnership that should be coordinated at local and global levels. Let's go a bit deeper too. We'll have two other categories, the objective categories and the indicator categories. So here, I won't have time to go into the details, but all of these information, again, are presented in the global roadmap, and we will also share the presentations. So if we move now to the targets, because this is where I want to go today, um, um, as you can see, normally, it was planned that in 2020, uh, it was planned to, well, we were supposed to be able to, to assess progress that have been done uh, since the beginning and since the launch of the roadmap. As of today, I think we can say that we are a little late on this. And I think, as Fru said, I think yesterday, but even also today, I think we now stand at a very critical phase of development of our partnership. And today, more than before, we know that the first years of implementation of a uh, big transversal documents such as, such as a roadmap takes time. So the first year, there are a lot of things to set up. And now with the development of the frame of the, um, of the country support platform, but also with the fact that countries are more and more engaged in cholera control and prevention, we think it is a right moment to re-engage with all of you partners and countries and see together how we are gonna operationalize uh, uh, the monitoring of uh, this uh, framework. Let's move to the next. Yes, this is also part of the, of the global roadmap. Um, one thing I wanted to add, all of the indicators we just discussed or we just presented are very high level indicators that need to be articulated with very concrete uh, indicators that can be collected and analyzed at field level. And as part, I think a, a part of the answer to the operationalization of the reporting mechanism is, is, is also in the NCP guiding do documents that have been developed by, by the GTFCC. So in this document, if you look at it carefully, there is also a list of indicators inside. Uh, a part of these indicators are shown on the screen in front of you. My point here is to show that there is now a need to coordinate all of these different works, species of works that have been done both at the, at the NCP level, at the global strategy level, and coordinate with all the existing mechanisms and, and, and reporting frameworks. Um, so as of today, I would say that in terms of concrete tool that has been developed, the NCP guiding, the guiding tool is giving some guidance in terms of first level indicators that should be collected to inform the global and higher level indicators from the global roadmap. So um, I think you remember because it was yesterday. So we uh, shared with you, we asked you to complete a very short survey. Um, this survey was just to get a sense of how you perceive this question of uh, assessing progress and what is currently ex existing in your countries or in your organization to assess progress. So I've just, we've extracted just a few key elements, uh, non-exhaustive of course, and I just want to remind that, of course, we are aware that this is not like a thorough study. It's more like a very short survey to have this first information and to also guide us in the way forward and identify, identifying the next step to operationalize uh, uh, this uh, assess, assessment of progress. So the first question uh, I wanted to, to, to showcase today, 
So when we had this um, questionnaire for countries, the first question we asked was, do you currently have a monitoring and evaluation system to assess progress made in the implementation of your cholera, cholera control and prevention strategy? Most of the countries, so if I remember, if I remember correctly, I think there are 13 countries who completed the survey. Most of them said that, yes, they have one. I would say two thirds of them. Is it used to inform operation decisions? I think it's almost 70% who said yes. If not, and this is an interesting question, why is it not the case? Most of the countries explained that the problem is that data is collected, but not used in an operational manner. Um, sec I think the second biggest point that was underlined is the fact that there is a lack of human resources to manage the system and that the, the, the monitoring and evaluation system in itself is not functional. We've asked also questions at, uh, to partners uh, because of course we are very much aware that there is m and &E systems in countries that, that do not necessarily correspond to mechanisms that are already in place uh, uh, in different institutions. So the question, the key question I wanted to highlight quickly is how do you monitor and support countries in monitoring the implementation of their cholera control and prevention strategy? And most of the partners, and it's all around 20 partners replied, most of them explained that they have their own m and &E mechanism. One response wasn't exclusive from the other one. The opportunity was given to give to select multiple answers. So a part, of course, explained that they were using the country's the country m and &E mechanism. And it was interesting to see that most of them integrate the global roadmap uh, uh, indicators um, that we just mentioned before uh, in their own uh, reporting mechanism. So these elements are, again, just to try to get a sense of where we are today, where we stand today, and where we should move to. In this slide now, the idea is to list a few of the key challenges we are facing today, and we wanted to bring to your attention. These are based on two things. The results from the breakout group session that was conducted last year. So if you remember well during the last annual meeting, on the occasion of the Country Support Platform Forum, there was a breakout session dedicated to monitoring and evaluation. We've taken out the key outcomes and included in them in this slide. And I think the results of these small surveys that we've conducted go in the same direction as the recommendation that were uh, uh, shown last year. So first, in terms of, uh, of identified challenges, there is a question of absence of m &E mechanism in countries. Second, the question of the, how we coordinate the existing m and &E mechanisms. And these bring two questions. First, I guess a key recommendation from last year was that we should use the existing monitoring frameworks, both at country level, but also the one that are existing at partners level. And we should harmonize m and &E across programs and departments, so within, for instance, a country. Third key challenge, the, it's a question of the collection, the analysis, and the use of data, because, of course, we, we all know that there is a strong challenge re regarding how we collect data and also what we do after that. And this is the next uh, challenge, the question of the lack of human resources to monitor, to collect, and also to monitor properly the data that uh, is being collected. And the final challenge that is being uh, that has been identified is, of course, the question of the funding of the Yemeni, because if we, well, we are all endorsed by this global roadmap to report and to assess progress, but at the end of the day, there is the question of financing the reporting that, yes, ha does have a, a cost, and it can be a, a, main, a main challenge to, to implement it in the coming years. So in, I think I would just finish with this slide <clears throat> saying that we have, based on all of this, we have identified three key next steps that we want to, to, to propose to you today. First, re-engage with countries to launch and implement the global roadmap monitoring framework. As I explained, it's a key moment to do it. Second, a concrete idea would be to conduct initial assessments of the existing cholera m and &E mechanisms. Uh, in countries, but also at partner levels, to be sure to coordinate probably um, well in the best way possible these different mechanisms. And this brings the question of the cooperation that is going to be discussed tomorrow. 
And thirdly, at a concrete next step, we suggest to present the first results at the 2022 annual meeting. And my final, final slide is just to say that this is basically just a session that is introductive for tomorrow breakout groups, because as you know, the key topic for discussion tomorrow is about how we can materialize and, and coordinate our respective expertise, strength, and, and, and resources uh, to, to better implement the global roadmap and, and monitor the, the progresses. Thanks very much. And over to you, Fruit.